Good morning, guys. That's me, Malik Yachim. And um, today I want to talk about, um, I guess it's mostly about opening, not actually, I'm sorry, mostly about calculation process. So we've been talking about that before. I will try to give you some, again, important tips uh, how to have your calculation in the right way. And I'm going to begin uh, today's lecture with my short game, uh, very short draw against um, against a uh, woman grandmaster, interesting grandmaster, Tata Abrahamian. Um, the girl, uh, one of the best ladies in our nation, uh, she's a member of our Olympic team, and uh, she's my basically student at, at the Olympic team because I'm the head coach of US women team. We play the game at most recent tournaments in LA, and uh, first I'm going to show you situations which I deal with, And I'll explain to you the, the, our decisions, my decisions. So I had black pieces against her. All right, so we have here line castle. I have to say it's all theory, and in fact, it's covered in my book of piano uh, style of lectures. I had an interesting game against uh, Dejan Bojkov as, Bojkov as well. Yeah, one of my favorite moves, which I had a game against Tatev herself again, and this game also published in Chew.com, it's not H5. Uh, but it was round two, and it was fast time control. And I usually play this move when I have longer time control, because, uh, you know, the game is very difficult after those positions. And also, I thought um, Tata probably has something in her mind. Even I'm sure, I'm, I mean, I'm okay there. I'm not really scared to play Nunat H5. But I thought, you know, to play something like new, something um, something else. And I played the move, uh, which, uh, according to theory, the best try uh, from black side. I put here Bishop, I mean, Rookie uh, The idea is very simple. I'm going to provide uh, support for e6 square. I'm going to play bishop e6 and try to trade uh, a light color bishops. So not f1 and bishop e6, pretty much uh, forcing white not to capture. I mean, uh, even my opponent played here in g3. She played in g3. And the idea behind this is to play d5. So the whole point of this system is um, I think I mentioned that uh, even uh, in my game against uh, against Kita Kiera in one of my most recent lectures, I said it's always important for black at the real pass type situations when Y doesn't fight with the center to consider of playing the 65 push. So D5 original idea designed for this, and now my knight and my rook defending E5 pawn, and we are okay, and this is clearly a target for black for to deal with. So obviously, after d5, uh, white cannot really capture on d5. And uh, she put here bishop c2. I think actually she should first she put queen e2. Uh, stay away from the uh, from possible trades. I played this, bishop c2. And I played b5. Well, b5 idea to support uh, c4 square, and I would like to capture, capture, jump on c4, uh, play to d8, and to grab the file, and actually stand, stand better. And here, she played in the h4, and that's the moment I would like to talk. I mean, all those things are important for you to understand. I'm not saying to you, I'll be in big trouble if I will play here anything else besides what I did. But I didn't feel comfortable to play situation because I do play the same positions as a white a lot. And I didn't feel comfortable to deal with uh, possible pressure after putting f3 move, after putting f3 uh, hits the f6, so my uh, bishops hits the h6, this knight's having access to jump on h5. And I call this decision making, um, like process in your calculation, as uh, principle of elimination, or sometimes I call it desperation mode. So I said, you know what, 
to stop all these white plants, I need to make this move. Bishop takes h3. But before I'll take on h3, I saw white can actually play this and deflect my knight because now my knight has to go away from original destination of jumping on h3 to support black queen and attack. So first I, I added this de, de, and then I took on h3. Again, why I'm doing this? Because as I said, I'm not happy in general to play situations like this when white clearly has a view to attack my king. Even I understand I'm not losing here, but this is inconvenient, incoming situation for black to deal with because they don't have clear targets to play for. And white does. White does have our targets here, here, here. So speaking practically, especially when you play this fast time control, uh, white has way higher chances to beat black than black white. And I guess my decision, I'm going to call it as practically uh, desperate mode, a practically nice way to play. So I took it, took it. Now, if white will make any other mistake, any other move, they'll be in big trouble. We have a big time pin. And white has to play here this. But unfortunately, I don't have much more than just make a perpetual check by playing queen h2 and queen h3. Um, I can make this fancy move to 94, but it's not going to help me because it's still same perpetual. And unfortunately, I can't play g6 because after this, I'm simply losing. So I had to make a decision and make a perpetual draw. So you can see why uh, Coach Melek is showing this game. Uh, because I just want to show you decision making. Because sometimes we have to make a decisions because we have no choice. Because speaking practically, rest is bad. Since rest is bad, it means that's the best. So I hope you understand this and I'm going to continue uh, on this lecture by providing you maybe a few examples from uh, endgame studies, which I believe uh, the best way for you would be to understand the process how we make decisions. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. Again, same elimination process. Let's try to understand this position, how we do what we do. Well, clearly, a white, um, white hopes to use this uh, space advantage on the queen side, and white hopes as well to maybe try to push this pawn to the queen, right? But firstly, they have to deal with one problem. Problem, knight hanging. And problem B, this pawn one step away from being a queen. So clearly, you're saying, all right then, I guess my picture is something like try to trade my knight with black pawn, and then maybe push if I mean e pawn, and to his bishop, I mean black will give away their own bishop for the pawn, and then my king will run away to the uh, pawn, and I'm going to win the game. So let's see how many squares this guy has. One, two, three, four. Well, this is immediately you're going to eliminate because you must understand, don't ever put your knight versus your subject on diagonal position because you will never reach this subject on h2 less than in three moves. So you have to spend three moves to spend to attack this pawn. So it means no way. Trash. This. Well, same problem because now black will get a position and then you're done. So very quickly understand you have to make a choice between this and this. Even without calculating, you must see, so this is, sounds good, but you must see that gives black extra option bishop c3 to attack the knight. I mean, even without understanding uh, and calculating, you don't need even to bother yourself to go for that. Why would you give extra option for black to play bishop c3 if that option leaving black no choice and making them play king g1? anyway. Why? Because you can't play any bishop move because it's kind of not smart since I'm going to play a5 and then you know what? You're going to be in big trouble. All right? So 
or I can actually play here because there's no actual improvement. You can't do anything. My point is, if you try to uh, calculate and then say, oh, you know what, oh, no, let me calculate, but you're going to waste your time. And in fact, after this, as I said, it might be not the win. So, message four, again, we use simple principle of elimination, leaving black no choice. We have reached first stage. We have reached the first stage, and now we need to understand what's our criteria. What are we playing for? In uh, end games, it's always important to consider spades, spacing problems. So clearly, that's our chance because this is last dark squares before a6 pawn reach a8 square, and especially this pawn blockades this diagonal. So it means uh, bishop will struggle to defend a pawn. So you are looking for clearly to go away and try to pick up the pawn, but you must understand. All right, this is what it is. Black has this move, and suddenly they fine. They okay. Since you saw this, your next step saying, "Oh my God!" So I guess I need to do this, right? Looks like I'm fine. It looks like the bishop has no way to stop my pawn. And uh, if bishop, bishop will take the pawn, then I can either take or maybe not. But if you take the same problem, because king still runs right step behind of you, and king still reaching c7 square, even black down so much space, they're still able to hold draw. So I guess the whole thing, you understand the concepts, again, by using simple principle of elimination, the whole concepts here is to make sure this guy doesn't have this diagonal to run. And what you do, you play e5, make him capture, and then you avoid this capture, and then you run, and then you run, and then you run, and suddenly Black King doesn't have this access, and they stepping away from a region diagonal, no matter how they play, they lost. They lost because now this guy passed the queen. Again, is it required for me to cut away that deeply? Not really. Not really. Again, depends, let's say, what I'm saying that to you guys depends how much time you have on your clock. If you do have a time, then you're welcome to calculate the whole thing. But let's say in um, similar practical situations, could be middle game, could be end game, if you don't have much time to uh, to think, you can simply handle this situation by understanding what's right and what absolutely cannot be accepted. We call it elimination. If you if you look for many books, many softwares, I mean, I like the books, it always giving you that chapter, it's called elimination process. And again, uh, we will talk about that more and more, but I want you to understand the way how we think rationally, the, the way how we think by understanding what's the right and what's the wrong, simply understanding what cannot be accepted. And also I have to mention that, so black had no choice as well, because this is like from both sides the only way for play. Let's say if black tried to play uh, something like this, for instance, and not to capture the pawn, and try to stop this uh, pawn by playing, um, let's say, bishop c3 or bishop b2, doesn't matter, then we have this, and now the problem is when black almost reached uh, the fence, looks like they almost here, in case if we take the here and they reach the goal, suddenly white has this trick. They have this trick and now game is over because now the pawn is deflecting the black king from being on c7. I must take the pawn, otherwise the pawn is going to get queen and then the king is far away to reach c7 square and now we are simply winning again. So this is how it works. I hope you understand this and I hope one day you're going to use the same weapon against your opponent. Yeah, this is another example for you guys. So clearly here, uh, black white has some issues with um, defending h8 knight. As you see, this knight is going to be die very soon. Let's say, what's our choice? Uh, if we're going to play bishop d5, kind of supporting my knight, then we deal with uh, knight f4, 
uh, and that Apur will defend his pawn and then attack his bishop as well. All right, so I guess if we play here king h3, then after king g7, um, we can play probably this, this, and this. And it looks like we're okay because it looks like uh, black has a problem developing here of pieces. But unfortunately, it doesn't work because black has very simple response. They have this response following by this, and it kills the whole thing. Because we're going to play this, knight defended, bishop has no access to support white knight, and black bishop will simply pick up this knight. So here again, we're going to use principle of elimination. We're understanding if we have a choice, if we have a chance here to survive, it's all going to be uh, because we need to use the position with those guys not being around. So I guess this move will come to your mind after spending maybe a few minutes. And again, even without calculating, you have to understand um, you must pick up this guy right away. Otherwise, he's going to play in the knight f4, and um, he's going to be bothered for you. Let's say if you play bishop f3 here, for instance. After bishop f3, if you play that move here, then this, this, black has this amazing shot. And now, we're in trouble. So the whole point, we need to understand our chance, our, our hopes, only it's miscoordination of black pieces. So we'll take it. So this is, comes to your mind, supposed to be quickly. The knight has no squares. The only move. Again, using your principle of elimination, you understand your chance is to reach this square and reach that square, right? So the best. King g6 the best. Again, black doesn't have that much choice. If they play here knight d8, they deal with this strong shot. And now king in a stalemate situations, bishop in stalemate situations. And the only way to play e6 to make any progress and then simple shot make a draw. So black has no choice. The only move, bishop d7. So basically, this position is supposed to be reached by you on autopilot. You have to understand kind of you make like simple decisions, um, simple eliminations, right? What's right, what's wrong, what's right, what's wrong. And you will reach this position. You're supposed to be reaching this position within five minutes in your mind, maximum. Because you simply understood the rest was trash. Only now, only now you are going to, you know, apply serious calculation. Uh, serious stuff. And again, even here, you're going to understand uh, your best move. Let's think about how. First, you want to play king f7. All right? But you can't play king f7 because that d8 check attacks the king and attacks the bishop and you lie. Then you think, all right, I must move my bishop, right? Where? We have big diagonal. We have so many squares. Where are we going to move our bishop? Bishop c6, then he does this with tempo. Tempo, attack, defend, game over, pawn hanging, I'm lost. All right, bishop e8, same thing. Attack, no more contact, pawn hanging, I'm lost. Hmm, wow, bishop e4 maybe. Let's try this. Same thing. Anytime, no matter where you're going to play, Knight can reach your bishop, even if you're making like far moves, still. But then you say, oh my god, I have a square on which knight doesn't have a chance to reach me. Now, I have a threat. He can't take my pawn because I'm playing king f5 and attack these two guys, right? So since this is king f7, big time threat, forcing to play king d8, and now my pawn hang. Well, again, it's a very principal elimination. Even without seeing your future lines, you have to understand that's your best move. No matter, you don't care how black will play. And suddenly we have bishop d5. And what happens, it's very funny. What happens, so now we can see this pawn is not moving. 
this knight trap, this bishop can move, and the king can move. But any time when bishop moves, you move your king. He attacks, you move back. This, and you still play your move, the best move. Any other squares will not work for the same reason, guys. Because you will learn that before, any move like that, he takes your attack, he attacks your bishop. So you must understand, the only square for your bishop not to be attacked, it's h1. So you simply move around, and black has no improvement. In fact, you don't really care about how this guy will go. Because if he goes, let's say, at the bishop h1, a black plays, let's say, king g8, right? You still do the same thing. You still go back here. And again, we don't have any um, any improvement because even if you black plays here, now we don't need to move our bishop. We can actually play this and play back. So this guy needs to be around here to protect the square. And that's how we are made a draw in this position. And again, the way how we made a draw, we simply applied principle of elimination. We simply understood what is right and what cannot be applied. You can call it elimination process, you can call it rational thinking process, it's really up to you. Um, many sources using different words, but the idea is the same. And sometimes you are making decisions by simply understanding what cannot be applied. Well, I hope you got it, I hope you understood this, and it was important tip for you uh, to know. And we will talk about this principle of calculations, uh, calculation tips in our future lectures. Thank you.